Welcome into another edition of the Stripe Show podcast. It is a froggy Wednesday, and we are right, I mean, heavily smack dab in the middle of the FedEx Cup playoffs. Coming off a crazy uh, tournament yesterday, crazy playoff yesterday at the FedEx Cup, uh, at the, um, excuse me, at the FedEx Championship, the first round of the PGA Tour playoffs. We're joined this week by a man that got in right on the number, played his way in, uh, Wyndham Clark, his second time here on the podcast. Wyndham, man, thanks for your time, buddy. Yeah, what's up? Thanks for having me on. Uh, so let's see. So yesterday, crazy playoff. Willie Z finally, you know, finally kind of knocks the door down, gets his first win. Were you watching that playoff? Yeah. Um, I mean, yes. I left. Uh, it was a crazy day for me as well. But I left uh, the course. I had an early. I had a flight to uh, to Delaware, which is where we are this week. And so I was in the airport, and one of the caddies uh, was there, and we were both watching on our phone. Because at that moment, I just got the security, was sitting down, and then he was walking over, and I was like, who won? And he's like, oh, it's still going on. And so then we sat down and watched uh, – we watched the last – I basically saw, like, the last two holes of the playoff. Were you thinking the same thing I was thinking as Will standing over that shot? So he makes the, the – they, I mean, they, they both made what were relatively easy pars on the first playoff hole. And on the second playoff hole, Will hits it right. Sep barely clears the water, takes a penalty stroke. They both make amazing pars. Then they go to 11, and I still don't know how Will's ball stayed up. Uh, Sep hits it in the water, and it looked like Will was thinking about hitting that shot. Were you thinking there's no way in hell he hits that? Yeah, I'm glad Joel Stock, uh, who's a friend, and his his caddy uh, that week was – I'm glad he stood in there and probably talked some sense into him. I mean, I would always try to hit, a, you know, hit the shot, but it just seemed like basically it was a win or lose on that shot. I mean, if he does it, if he advances it at all and it doesn't, and it goes anywhere on the green, he wins the tournament or anywhere that's not in the water, he wins the tournament. But if it goes back in the water, he, pro- he probably loses. And so I was sitting there with the caddy that um, I was with in the airport and we were both talking. I was like, you have to drop. I mean, if you knew – on you know start of the week Wednesday that if you had a hundred yards out to get up and down to win the tournament you would take that a hundred percent of the time and even if you don't get up and down you still have a chance to win the tournament on the next hole so right. uh, glad he finally took the drop and you know congrats to him he did awesome and you know I played with him actually on Tuesday we played practice round and you know Willie Will always hits it great so he you know his game looks sharp and it was just a matter of time. Wyndham could he have advanced that that ball? I mean, it looked well, like the rocks were going to ba- – because it looked like if you don't hit it perfect, the rock would have caused the club to bounce in and then blade the ball, which it could have then embedded it into the side of the grass. Yeah, I, I think he could have gotten to the ball. Um, I, I mean, unfortunately, I've been in – I bet you every player on tour has been in a spot where they, they've had that exact shot. And um, – because I've had more than once, and so I imagine everyone else has. But uh, basically <laughs> – the way he was going to hit it, it was just going to go deeper into, like you said, deeper into it because the, the rock was in his backswing. If he had an open face and was able to come in cleanly behind it, I liked his chances better, but the way he was doing it, it was basically like, yeah, like he was going to just dig it deeper into earth. And then, then who knows, then it just would have been a disaster. And I mean, I'm glad he didn't do that because his, I mean, the problem is then everyone goes blames the caddy. How did the caddy let him do that? Right. Then it just leads to a whole other things, and so at least at least by not doing that, it you know leads from a bunch of other discussions and um, you know critics saying things uh, about whatever towards Will. So I'm glad uh, I'm glad they took the drop and glad it ended the way it did. Yeah, we'll definitely get into some critics that were uh, that were mouthing off yesterday as the tournament was coming to an end. It was good to see Will Will get his victory. Now, what I what I'm wondering is if when everything was over, you think he went over there and dropped that ball back and tried to play that shot, or no? Would you have done that? No, no chance. No, no. It's. I bet no. you every member at that club is doing it today. I bet you that shot's been hit a few times today. People have gone over there and see if they could yeah, do it. They, they could probably all it. wanted. Yeah, they probably did. They, I bet you there's a lot of people that wanted to see if they could do it, but. No, I mean, once it's over, you know, I haven't won on PJ Tour, so I'm not speaking from experience, but I'm speaking from experience of winning in um, previous tournaments. Like, once it's over, you're just glad it's over and you won it. And, uh, you know, you, he's, he probably went and celebrated and had a great time. Now, if he would have lost, I 100% would have gone back and I probably would have tried that shot 
if uh, if roles were reversed and or whatever, I would have I would have tried that shot. And and if you pulled it off, you'd be kicking yourself. And if it, you know, and if it went deeper in there or went into the water, then you just said, all right, good, you know, good thing I dropped. Yeah, I mean, once Sepp was in the bunker, that he had to have another shot to get out. So he's he was one in, two back to the drop zone, three in the bunker. He's four on the green, looking at, at a double. So, but with you know, with Will laying there one, it did make the most sense for him to drop. I think if Sepp, if when he dropped in the drop zone, had he knocked it close, then maybe Will feels as if he has to try to play that shot. But he didn't have to play it. What yeah, he knew actually, where he stood. The order of how it went didn't Sepp hit his bunker shot before Will even hit? Yeah, he did. That was, I think that was the only thing that I would was probably poor on Sepp's part because if he was away though, he was further away. They said shot link measured. He was further away, so therefore he could play. Well, I would have tried to say I would have almost. I mean, not that you would do that, but you'd almost want to like not play so that you didn't show what you were going to make. Maybe you know, like right? Because then maybe Will would have been more inclined to. He goes, well, he could hold out. Well, I mean, I don't know. But yeah, no, it was really it was a cr- crazy playoff. But yesterday you uh, started off well, you make birdies on eight and nine. You're well comfortably in the line and then coming down towards the end, had a rough finish. Did you know where you needed to finish to get to number 70 to get to this weekend, Delaware? No, I, I honestly, I didn't. I, my caddy knew. Um, I actually, I birdied, what hold it, I birdied 13 going into 14 par three. And I was only two shots off the lead. And so I'm thinking about winning the tournament. Um, I'm still a little bummed, um, a little bummed on shot selection on, on, uh, 14. Um, I, I wish I could just go back and replay that shot. Cause I, I had a great club and obviously you don't want to go long left in that bunker, but the, for me in that position where I was, I was at 11 under leaders mm-hmm. were at 13 at the moment. And I guess as far as, you know, the only thing you can't do on that par three is hit in the water. And the shot that we played somewhat brought the water in. And I wish I would have just hit a full seven iron instead of chipped a seven iron. And I chipped it. I still actually in the air, it was going a little right. It was barely right of the flag, which there's a small part of the green, but I thought it was going to cover because the cover was like 190, but it was downwind. So let's say it was playing like 182 mm-hmm. roughly. I thought, oh, chip seven iron with how hot it was and how far the ball's going. I'm like, that has to cover. And, and, and so when it didn't cover, um, I ended up making double and it kind of just ruined the whole momentum. Cause I had been grinding all day. I didn't have my stuff today or yesterday, but I was two under for the tournament and I still had a chance. And it's like, all right, if we get past this hole. We have basically four birdie holes coming in and even that hole's birdie hole, but it was just like, there's still an outside chance that we could, you know, win the tournament or, you know, we, what I was thinking also is get a top five, get a, a great finish to where I'd be in a better spot this week to, right. uh, to try to get into a championship. So, so what ended up happening is that, you know, I doubled that hole, go to the next hole, make a par. And then um, somehow my, just a crazy bunker shot on the par five, I end up bogeying 16, 17. And then next, you know, I'm sitting there and I'm like, Holy crap. I, I might not even get into this week. Um, so never in my mind, during that day, had I thought at all about, hey, we're not going to, you know, what do I need to finish to try to get into the BMW this week? It was more about, let's try to go win this tournament. Um, so pretty much walking to 18, I'm like, I mean, do I have to birdie this hole to get in? Or what do I have to do? And I end up parring it. And then... Uh, that was a good know, par, too. You had to get an up and down par and make a nice putt. Yeah, well, so, yeah, I hit it in the fairway, and I was trying to, the wind was in, and I had a hanging lie off the right, and wind was in and off the left and i didn't just want to bail out to the right like as I, everyone probably saw everyone was doing mm-hmm. um on that hole everyone's hitting to like 30 feet right and trying to two putt because i thought I, I essentially thought i had the birdie to get in now at this point I, I i didn't really know um and so i kind of took a shot on and i barely missed it left and it rolled down it wasn't like a huge miss i, I mean the, it's only four paces off the left so i missed right. five left um and yeah i got it up and down uh, but yeah, walking off, I asked my caddy, I'm like, are, did I just, are we flying home back home to Phoenix now? And he's like, I don't know. He goes, we're in right now. And so I, I was beside myself, honestly, I, I'm really glad. I'm really glad I'm in, but I was beside myself. I walked off there thinking I, I just literally played my last five holes four over 
to now not make it to the BMW. And so while the tournament was going on, everyone's watching Will and uh, and Sepp and everything ensuing that. And Trey was in, had a chance to win. And I'm looking at. I was basically I we found out it was about I think it was three guys that mattered and I think it was Tyler Duncan and Troy Merritt and JJ Spawn because mm-hmm. um, at that point I was only up like a point or not even a point yeah what even a point what even a point in seventieth and so basically what we were told is if everything if everyone just part in I was in okay well that's probably not going to happen right um, if Tyler Troy or JJ go up or down that's what affected me and so basically i needed every point so jj spawn didn't have a great day but if he birdie let's say he just you know at the end of the day birdie 16 par 17 and birdies 18 or something he would move up to where i would get less points and then i'd be knocked out so we were watching those guys like a hawk and honestly i you know i never want to root against anybody um but it's you're sitting there and you're like please don't make birdies (laughs) i mean all i want is cars so I, I mean, went, what a range of emotion. You you come off 13 and you're thinking, hey, man, I'm in this thing. I got a chance. I'm two back. I got a chance to win this. I'm com- I'm not even worried about next week. We're in for that. I could win this thing. And then now you're sitting there as you come off 18 and you're, your fate is in other people's hands, which is the most helpless thing ever. Yeah, yeah it really is. It, it's, it's, it's honestly, it was a, I played great all week. Um, just my worst day was Sunday. But even then, I was two under through 12 holes, 13 holes, and I was playing fine. And legitimately didn't hit that battle shot in 14, make a double. The next hole, I barely pull an iron shot, hits a tree, goes way back, oh. barely clips a tree, goes way back to fairway. On that hole, you have to hit it past 250. Um, and I hit the tree at like 260, and it kicked 40 yards back. So then I couldn't go at the green. So I had to lay up, make a good part there. So then I go to the next hole, part five, hit it in the middle of the fairway. Barely pull a six iron going for the green at two. Barely miss the green. Like I'm, you know, eight yards left of the flag. And at this point, I still really haven't hit a bad shot. And I just bog- made a double, barely made a par in the hole before that. And then I get green side on this par five, and it's a dicey bunker shot. And I just try to, you know, I'm trying to win the tournament. And I'm thinking, okay, let's get this up close. I could also make the shot. And I just got ahead of myself, and I looked up. I bladed the shot goes into the but over the green into the next bunker and it base it, it half plugs then i don't get up and down and then that, then i'm like what just happened I, right i mean literally less than 45 minutes ago i had a chance to win a tournament now i'm now i'm over par i'm like what i mean so it was just a weird so so that whole thing happened and then i was just beside myself fortunately collected myself and was able to make a good up and down on 17 for bogey and then a good par on 18 and and make it in. So with all that said, you know, that now that I've digested, I'm glad I played great all last week. Um, Just honestly, I have, you know, three bad holes Um, at the wrong time. (laughs) Yeah. Now I'm here. So I still have a chance to make it to the tour championship. If not, it's been a great year and um, yeah, I'm happy to be here. Now you got a new course this week, uh, Wilmington country club in Delaware has never held a pro event. I know they've done a lot of rerouting, I think holes one, two, three, and four are the start. Of, are actually playing as 10, 11, 12, and 13. So they've done a lot of routing. I think they're going to use some of the north course holes, some of the south course holes. Have you seen the golf course? Do you know anything about it? No, I have not seen it. Um, I've heard it's, um, you know, classic, big, slopey green. Well, I guess big is not right, but slopey greens. Um, I assume it's probably a pretty classic northeast parkland golf course with trees. Um I have not seen it. I, I have no idea what I'm walking walking into, but um, you know, I'm 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 happy to be here. I'm actually going to go after this. I'm going to go check in, and I'll see it for the first time. But um, but yeah, so it's I have not seen it, and no one knows anything about it. So I, I'd say no one has an advantage. Right, exactly. That's that, that that's what my point was is that nobody's got any prior knowledge. I know they've held some amateur events there and stuff like that. I'm sure that somebody has played it but not in the way that it will be played this week. So does that mean nobody really has the advantage? Yeah, I, honestly, in any given week, I, I mean, unless there's only a few places, I'd say a year that maybe someone has an advantage and that's like Augusta um, and maybe just, I don't know, maybe a few other places that someone has an advantage with how good the caddies are and how good we are now and how much work is done Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of a week. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's really not like any sort of special thing that 
someone would know. And it would only be a place like Augusta that you've always seen the same pins. And so you know how putts break or, um, you know, certain spots to be and not be, but, um, yeah, so I really don't think it's too much of an advantage for anyone, at least now, like in, I'd say in years past, like someone's at least seen the course a few times. So we're all seeing it for the first time. It's going to be, um, you know, it's just going to be down to the pure, who plays the best golf. And, um, yeah, I, I really don't think it's that big of an advantage. Now, how much does it change this week with there being no cut? Would you have a, you know, top 30, I mean, top 30 advance, but there's no cut. So now you're guaranteed four full days. Does that change how you play on Thursday, Friday, knowing that you've got the weekend? Mm, no, no, it doesn't. I do. I definitely think it probably makes your Thursday, Fridays less, um, I, regardless of who you are, let's just start with this. Regardless of who you are, if you're the best player in the world or you are struggling to keep your card, you, you still think about the cut line. Uh, like you, you're playing the tournament, and if you're, you know, going into Friday, you're you shot two under Thursday, and you're like, "Ooh, I'm kind of on the cut line," and then come to the back nine, you're like, "I'm still at two under." You're thinking about the cut line, huh? whether you're the right. best player or, or not. Um, so I would just say it's probably less stressful on Thursday, Friday, to where. Now you're thinking, okay, let's just each day give myself, put myself in position to try to win this tournament, uh, which all of us do anyways. But now after Friday, it's not like you're coming down the last four holes where you're going to be tight. Um, and so I think, you know, I think you'll see, I think you'll see better scores uh, typically when there's no cut, especially on like a Friday, you'll see guys just free up and not be so tight coming in those last few holes. But, but for me, no, I mean, I know what I have to do this week. I basically have to win or, finish second or third so i'm gonna go out there and try to play my best and you know this is the last event of the year potentially for me of, of this you know this golf season and so i'm i, I even did it last week there's a couple holes where maybe i would have hit an iron off the tee just to like get in play and play smart and my caddy and i looked at each other like no you know what we're gonna try to win this tournament and let's just send it let's we're hitting it good let's just be aggressive and so I'm going to take that same mentality. And if you're hitting it good, then that's puts yourself in a chance to make more birdies and, and win tournaments. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, as you look back on this season, you said potentially this could be your last event. I know there's only really one more event in the season left, the tour championship next week in, in Atlanta. Um, you have, a, you've had a solid year. You've had three top tens. Um, I know you have, a, you've already secured your card for next year. Granted, to some people, that's not a big deal. They always get it. But to, to some guys, that is a big deal. Secure your future for next year. You can pick and choose your events that you want to play. Um, you played in the U.S. Open, played in the Open Championship, made it to the second round of the playoffs. Are there? Are, are you one of those guys that sets goals going into the year? And were you able to reach any of the goals that you set? Yeah, I do. I do set some goals. Uh, I, I mean, everyone's first goal is to get to the playoffs. And then after that, um, you know, that's always – that's always my goal uh, to keep my card. And so that's obviously great. Getting to the, to BMWs was definitely on there. Mm -hmm. um, tour championships always high on my list. That's kind of one of my main things. Cause I feel like if you get to tour championship, you probably had did a lot of great things throughout the year. Right. Um, I set more process goals and focus on that. Um, you know, I, I had a lot of stuff happen, a lot of crazy stuff happened kind of December, January, February in my life. And so I didn't play good golf then. And I, I was dealing with a lot of stuff off the course. And so with everything that went on, I, I honestly, I had a great year. I made a ton of cuts. I improved in so many areas. Um, you know, my tee to green was way better. My uh, strokes gained approach was a lot better. A lot of the stuff that I feel like was holding me back from being great um, helped a ton. You know, I even made an equipment change between the fall and the spring. That's obviously huge, and that's uh, takes time to adjust. And what and equipment so, change did you make? I was 14 clubs PXG, and now I'm essentially 13 clubs Titleist. So, you know, that's that's a huge change as far as I'm using a different driver. I mean, literally using every club is different in my bag. And so there's just a lot of things that happen kind of from the fall to where we are now. And I feel like I, I handled them really well and played. And I, you know, as, as the summer hit, I really was starting to play some good golf. I was in mm -hmm. top 20 to top 10 leading into the weekend multiple, multiple times. And granted, I didn't have the weekends that I wanted. Um, but, hey, you got to put yourself there. I played a lot of good Thursday or, yeah, Thursday, Fridays, and even some Saturdays. Now I just got to start playing good Sundays. So I just feel like, for me, it's just a process. And eventually, 
I'm going to put four great rounds together. And I think once I do that and kind of get comfortable in doing that, I think it's going to become a common thing for me. So it's been a great year. I hope, I hope I go out with a bang. If not, I get three weeks to re reset and we start the new season. Talk about the equipment change a little bit, not so much as why, but like going through an equipment change, how tough is that to go from playing one brand of equipment to going to another? Um, I would say, I would say it's tough. I didn't change the golf ball, which helps a lot. Um, that, we've that, seen some guys, like if you remember when Rory switched from Titleist to Nike, I mean, completely derailed things. It took him a while to get things going again. And you've yeah. seen equipment changes really throw people off. Yeah. So I, what I, what I did and learned from people is I, you try to keep one constant variable and that was the golf ball for me. So I knew I I've always played the Titleist golf ball. It's my, I think it's the best golf ball. And so I didn't change that. So at least when I had bad hitting days with the new equipment or the old equipment, I knew what it was, right? So I just have one variable. So, um, so that that was one thing I think that we did um, did really good as a team. My team is that we just kept that. So we had one constant. Um, but what is tough, especially when you're switching from um, a company like PXG, is is like the spin numbers. It's different, um, and th that's where that's kind of everything. So. I went and tried every single club under the sun. I tried Ping, Titleist, TaylorMade, um, Callaway. Ca Callaway. I, I tried Callaway. I even tried Mizuno irons. I went and did everything. Um, and what I, my main thing was is my distance is one of my biggest advantages. And so I went and said, okay, what driver do I hit absolutely the best? And so not necessarily was, the furthest. Not necessarily the furthest. I, I wanted because I was already a top. 10 and driving distance i wanted yeah. to be one of the top i wanted to gain that 10 20 percent, 30 percent in accuracy which mm -hmm. is really what's going to make me more money and give me more success out here and so i went and tried everything and uh, that quickly weeded out the companies that weren't going to work for me and ultimately that led me to titleist i hit their driver the best and so from there it's like okay now within titleist like okay what do we have to offer in uh in that uh, you know, with them. And so what was great is the driver figured that out. That was an easy switch. The irons, I played them in college um, and the wedges all my whole life. And so that was kind mm -hmm. of an easy switch. The nice thing is, you know, PXGs are, are great clubs and, but they're built for, I, I feel like high spin players and I'm a low spin player. So I don't necessarily think PXG was the greatest match for me. And they did an awesome job with me trying to create stuff that spun more. Um, but with that said, it, it was, it was still a challenge. And so instantly Tylus is, they, they can create Tylus can, I feel like do, can do both ways, but they offer more spin. And so for me, it, I just instantly, my dispersion with my irons and my, my wedges and everything just instantly went this much. I mean, it was, I mean, I don't know what my numbers are. I have to look, but I was, in the high hundreds as far as approach to the green. And now I've gotten into the low hundreds, even, even into the nineties and uh, strokes gain approach, which is massive. Like that's a huge right. switch and huge gain. And so, um, so I'm, I'm only thinking that's going to continue to get better because half the year I play with PXGs. So half the stats are kind of jaded and half of them are with the Titleist. And so um, I'm, I'm thinking next year, I'm going to even be higher up in strokes gain approach and, and driving and everything. So, it, it's, it is tough. I mean, rough lies, like that was the biggest thing is rough lies. So with PXGs, I got a lot of flyers. Mm -hmm. And with the Titleist clubs, I hit in the rough. And our first few events, my caddy John and I were like, well, we're used to playing almost an auto flyer. So we'd have 185, 190. And we're like, well, we've always hit nine iron with a PXG because it flies. And so we were so caught in like, what do we do? And now it's not flying out of the rough. And so now I'm having to actually hit the correct club from the rough. And so that took, I mean, that took 10 tournaments where you actually feel comfortable reading a lot. Right. Um, so it's little things like that, that you don't really think about. You think you, I mean, we're sure we're the best players in the world, but when you change what you're used to seeing, and I played PXGs for five years, you're used to the ball coming out of the rough this way, bunkers this mm -hmm. way, these lies. Now it's coming out with more spin and, and you're able to shape the ball more or whatever it is like that just changes your, where you play it and your sight lines. And so it definitely, regardless of who it is, it, as you've seen, like Rory, uh, Rory did it. 
um, even John Rahm. Like, it takes a little while. Like, John Rahm won the year he switched, but he also, his first few events didn't play well. So, yeah, no, it's, it's tough. It, it takes it all, for everybody, it takes just a little bit of time to transition and get comfortable with the clubs. And I feel like this summer I started getting really comfortable with them. And, and right now I feel really good about them. So, now you've got an off season ahead of you where you can get even more comfortable with it and start right. next year and not have to go through that change. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, that makes a big difference. So, uh, speaking of this week and kind of going back to last week, there's been a lot of talk about Cam Smith and whether it was the uh, Percy said that he was good, as good as gone with Leishman that they were going over. And then there was the drop issue on Sunday because I guess he dropped and the ball was on the red line, which means it's technically still in the hazard. So he took a two shot penalty. And then now he has withdrawn this week. Do you think there's anything more to the withdrawal that has to do with maybe the, the jump to live or maybe the drop issue that, that lingered on to Sunday? Or do you think it's really what they said? It's just a hip issue and he'll be back next week at the tour champ. Um, I wouldn't look too far into it. I mean, it, let's just put it this way. If regardless if he's going to live or not, he's what third or fourth in the FedEx. He has a chance to go win. Yeah. I think he's third, third. He has a chance to go win 15 to 20 million. There's zero chance he'd be pulling out of this event, regardless if he's going or not. Cause he has, I mean, I don't care who you are. If you have a chance to win an extra 15, 20 million by winning the tour championship, right. you're going to, you're going to play. So he clearly has something going on um, probably w- or with his body. Um, so I wouldn't look too far into it. He must have gotten here and maybe he's tired and needs a break. Um, body, something. I mean, if he doesn't play next week, then yeah, there, there's definitely something going on. Um, but I think he probably is like, I just need a break. That's going to set me up. He probably doesn't think he's going to drop that much. He'll be in the top 10 going into – East Lake, and he's like, I still got a chance to win there. So, I wouldn't think too much into it. I mean, I'm I'm hoping he's not super injured, and hope, hopefully he's all right. And I don't think I don't think it had anything to do with the drop, live, or anything. I just think, you know, it's a long year. I mean, there's it is there. Uh, believe me, there's a lot of mixed emotions last week for guys that um, like myself that had to play well to get in, and the guys that had that didn't play well to get in. They're like, well, at least I get four weeks off. Like right. it's a uh, I know that sounds bad. Everyone wants to be here and everyone wants to be tour championship, but you know, for the guys that didn't win early or had a great season where they were coming into this or into last week and this week where they were top 30, it's like I played 20 some plus events and you're tired. And so he probably just like, Hey, it's been a long summer. He played a decent amount in the summer. Um, So yeah, I I imagine he's just, I wouldn't look too into it. As far as live goes, you guys as players, and obviously with all the, the lawsuits and everything going on in the PGA Tour, right now, as far as the lawsuits have gone, the PGA Tour is one up, which I agree with the I agree with the decision of the judge there to not let those guys come back and compete in the FedEx Cup playoffs because they made the decision to go, and they knew when they made that decision to go that that was probably what was going to happen. Um, the live talk, is that wearing on you guys as players? Are you guys, are you guys getting pretty tired of it? Yeah, it's... It's so old. It's the best, ex, uh, best example is it's, it's kind of how the COVID talk was. I mean, I remember when COVID hit, it, yeah. it, you couldn't go. If you saw friends, you couldn't go more than 30 minutes before it came up. And someone was like, did you see this? Or did you hear this? What about this? And <laughs> it's literally how it is for us. So you'll talk, we'll play practice round for a couple holes. And the next, thing you know, someone's like, boom, live. And then you talk about it for four holes everyone gets heated or they get, they share their opinion and then it kind of ends. So it's kind of, it's getting old. Um, unfortunately for us on tours, every, you know, every week or two that it goes by where there is no talk, then something happens to where there's either a live event, guys are trying to play in this or more guys leave. So then it's just even more talk then it brings it up again. And so like this week, it's nice. We probably won't have much talk about it because we're, there's no one playing in these the live guys aren't playing. So we got to just focus on the golf, but then come on right after to a championship, more guys could leave. And then we're right. back at it. So, so yeah, we're definitely, I think all of us are tired of it, whether you're going live or not, we're just kind of like, it's, it's definitely created a, a distraction from the golf, but who knows? Maybe it's a good thing for golf. It's, you know, good press, any press, is good press. So. 
Well, you know, is it is it changing relationships in the locker room? Like, I, I mean, I don't know who you're friends with and who you're not. Are there some guys who have gone who you're friends with who maybe it's changed your relationship with them? Or have you seen relationships changed by guys who have gone? Yeah, I'm not going to go into too far detail on people, but it definitely has. There's guys that have severed ties that were friends. Um, and I don't think – a lot of it has nothing to do with them leaving. Um, right. I don't, think any, I don't think anyone's really mad about leaving. That's exactly uh, where I stand. And I've said that every week is, listen, I don't like it. I mean, I don't, I don't, I, well, I don't even say that. I don't like where the money's coming from. That's just plain and simple. But if you want to go, go. And that's fine. You can go over there and you can play and that's fine. And we understand you can say all day. The, the, I think the person that's been the most honest uh, as far as saying why he went was Faraday. They offered me so much money. I couldn't say no. I get it. Yeah. Take yeah. your money and go. But then don't try to come back and want to double dip and take from where you left when you knew when you left, you couldn't come back. That's where my issue lies. Yeah. And, and that's, I'd say that's where ev almost everybody's issue is. I, other than, I'd say. And then don't that. sue these guys. I mean, remember the PGA Tour, when you sue the PGA Tour, for people that don't understand, you're not suing the actual tour, you're suing the players. The PGA Tour are the guys that play every week. Yeah. People like when, you, Wyndham, that's who they're yeah. suing. Exactly. And, what I was going to say is other than 10 players, all of us. So anyone you talk to about this on tour, all of us have a number other than about 10 players. Clearly the guys that have been offered hundreds of millions and have turned it down. Those are the 10 guys I'm talking about that would turn, you know, the money doesn't mean anything for them because they've made so much that they're like, you know, I don't need an extra 300 million. I'd rather win majors and be in the hall of fame kind of deal. Um, so with what, I'm saying, and other guys are saying, we all have a number. So if they came and offered me X, I'd be dumb not to take that kind of money. Um, and I think that's how most guys feel. But where I would differ from the other guys is I would say, I would basically, when I make my decision, I'm 100% there and I'm not going to double dip. And I think that's where, like you said, is the biggest issue. And the worst part is a lot of these guys get up and you know they said, oh, I, I chose live for more off time and time to be with family less events, this, this, and that. And, and then they turn around and now they want to play the PJ tour. It's like, what, that's actually more tournaments. So I don't understand. So just like you said, why not just say, Hey, they offered me a lot of money. I took the money and it's a job. And at the end of the day, this makes my life for my family better. Boom. End of story. I don't think there'd be any discussion. No, there honestly, there'd be no like ill towards anybody. You'd just be like, great dude. Awesome. You got paid. I'm jealous. Um, yeah, I mean, like yeah, Dustin like Johnson, said, he wasn't part of the lawsuit. Dustin took his money, went over there, and he's been quiet. Same yeah, with Brooks Kepka, took I his money and left. Of, I have a lot of respect for like Dustin and Brooks for for not being part of that because um, I think they realized the PJ Tour created who they are. Um, gave them a platform to be who they are. Obviously, they're great golfers, but if the PJ Tour didn't exist, they wouldn't be they wouldn't be in that position to take hundreds of millions of dollars to be on the live tour. So I think they realized they're like, you know what? I'm getting paid. I don't need to go and, and battle that. So I respect them. Um, it, and it is tough. I'm friends with a lot of those guys and, and a lot of us, I, you know, I'm not going to put words in other people's mouth, but I'd say a lot of guys on tour were very bummed when those guys came back and tried to sue, because let's say that whatever those hours were that you, we, uh, the tour spent on that lawyer, or the lawyers to fight that that's money coming from our purses from mm -hmm. our pockets essentially. And mm -hmm. so, yes, when they sue us or when they sue PJ tour and, and they think it's Jay Monahan and, and the organization, it's actually us. And so that's, that's where it's uh, last week is where it got real for a lot of guys and, and, and made things uncomfortable. And, you know, I, I don't want to say too much about it because these guys are my friends and I don't want to, um, has it cost you any, for, has it cost you any friendships yet? Uh, no, no. Um, I've won teetering, but it's, I, I don't want it to affect it. I just, I'm mad at, I'm mad at him right now, but he's a friend for life and that won't change anything. I just, I just think a lot of them, a lot of them are being told some things that I don't, I, I just don't think they're hearing. I don't know where they're getting their information. That's basically mm -hmm. what I understand is that they were told the, the whole time they couldn't play and then yet they thought they could. And so. I, don't I think know we know where that information is coming from. I see, it seems like everything we read, it's coming from Norman. Is yeah, that, I mean, they, they can't I tell you you can't do this. They can't do this. They can't do that. And then in the end, they can do it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess, yeah, I guess it is from Norman. I just, 
I don't know. I, I just, I'm surprised that they're not doing, I, I'm surprised they just didn't think that Jay was being serious. I, I mean, I guess, mm-hmm. I don't know if they drank the Kool-Aid or what, but like, they just, uh, they didn't hear anything. It's just baffling to me. Like if I'm making that big of a life decision, I'd want to do my homework. And I'm sure they did their homework. Um, but when you, I know some of the guys, especially some of the guys that were in the lawsuit that sat down with Jay Monahan multiple times. And I'm pretty sure Jay was like, if you go, you're suspended or kicked off the tour. You're not going to be allowed back. Boom. Right. And then yet they go and, and, and maybe they thought there's no way they can win the lawsuit. I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's pretty baffling to me. Um, but like I said, like, you know, I'm, I'm pro PJ tour, um, right now, but if, if I ever got an offer, it would be hard for me to turn down. So it's, it's a very, um, it's a, yeah, it's a tough situation. I, I think golf's in a great spot. I think the PGA tour is the best platform for golf, um, right now. And, you know, I think you see it this weekend was way more exciting than I think other events that have been played outside the PGA tour. And I think every week on the PGA tour is more exciting than, um, than what other tours have to offer. And I, and I think we're the best players in the world and, and the tour has a great product. So I'm, I'm happy to be here. I'm, I'm fortunate to be here. I'm blessed to be here. So, um, We'll, we'll see what happens, but yes, I'm definitely, I think we're all tired of the talk and hopefully yeah. a couple of years from now, we don't have to worry about it, but who knows? I think the quality of the winner on the PGA tour is much better as well. When you look at the three guys that have won over there, it's been Schwartzel, Grace and Stenson. The last time either one, any of those three won a full field, a event was Charles Schwartzel won the Valspar in 2016. That's yeah. a long time ago. Well, uh, Brent, Brent and Grace won a B event. How many cuts those guys are making too? Like, it. Believe me, it's. Yeah, a lot of us talk about that too. Behind closed doors, all of us are like, I mean, they're essentially right now. I mean, there's what forty eight guys. I mean, there's twenty guys are playing it. So every week is not even the tour championship of competition. So it's, right. you know, if you get to the tour championship, there's thirty guys. Well, ten or fifteen of those guys are not going to play well. It's just not their week. So now there's ten to fifteen guys you're playing against. And then five of those guys are going to be tired by the end of the week or have something happen that they make a big number. They're out of the tournament. So now you're playing against essentially 10 guys. And that's, right. <laughs> that's, that's and it's a 54 hole event <laughs> and there's no cut. Yeah. So you're not even eliminating anyone that plays bad. So it's, it's, yeah. uh, yeah, it's 54. I mean, 54 holes exactly like you're not really sleeping on it after two days. It's not really sleeping on a lead. You hadn't played three rounds of golf. You hadn't gone grinded you haven't spent time in the media you haven't done everything that happens in a tour event and now you're just like oh i guess it's a saturday and i right. i don't know I, it probably has to change their ma- mindset um because clearly i mean those guys haven't won but they're obviously great players so but remember they told us it's not a money grab <laughs> yeah <I know. laughs> Very, believe me it's they, they wouldn't be there wouldn't be so much mockery of it if they just all said hey we got paid and took the money right Exactly. Which I don't get which I don't get why they don't do that in the first place. Like we we get it. Like we all know why you're going there. If there I was mean DJ money, did. DJ said I made the decision that was best for my family. That's all he said. That's fine. I, know. I, know. I can't argue with that. And I don't think anyone and no one's had any issue with DJ or Brooks this entire time. It's the guys that are like, you know, saying other things, but right. But Anyways, um, have you been approached by Liv? Um, I've been in talks, yeah. You have been. Yeah, but nothing but, yet to make you nothing. No, no, no. I mean, uh, you know, for me, the number. I mean, obviously, it's a nice number, and if I said it out loud, you guys would be like, "Oh, that's a nice." But it's not worth. If I play out here for twenty years on PJ Tour, I feel like I can make way more money than than what that has to offer. And plus, I, I, this is what I tell people. I, I grew up when I was younger and coming through the ranks. I grew up dreaming about winning putts or making putts to win tournaments, to win majors, to go for Jack's record, to go for Tiger's record, to try to be the best in the world. I never thought about making a putt to make four and a half million dollars or to be on this tour and strictly an exhibition event. I I never, that never really, I've never crossed my mind. And so growing up, I wanted to, like, I wanted to win tournaments. I, I play golf not to make money. I play golf because I love it. And I want to try to put my name in a record book as one of the greatest players to ever play and to win majors right. and to, and be someone's idol and um, 
all the things that go with being a great player. And so that's where my mind is at. Um, and, you know, like I said, with that said, there is a number that changes your life and it would make you really have to think about it. But as of right now, that number has not been hit and my number is high because I, I, I truly feel that way. Like I, right. I would rather grind it out 20 years on tour than just get paid and play three, four years or whatever, however many years. And then, be retired or whatever happens. I don't know what's going to happen with the live tour, but so you're saying legacy to, matters. Legacy matters to me. So, right. That's, that's where I'm at right now. I couldn't agree more before we let you go. Uh, when get your week started, I know you've got an important week, lots of practice ahead and obviously an important tournament and trying to play. Do you have any idea where you need to finish this week to get into the top 30? Yeah, I kind of did a run through the points with uh, one of the, the, yesterday in the airport. I think I have to finish solo third or better. Um, solo third or better. So, I mean, I basically have to win the tournament, um, right. which, to be honest, every week I go into, that's what I'm thinking about. So Right. It's no different. It Same approach. It doesn't change anything. Um, you know, I, the way I look at it, I want to make the Stewart Championship, and that's where I want to be, and I'm, I'm, hoping, I'm hoping I'm there next week. Um, but at the same time, like I said, it's late in the year. I'm hoping for a great week this week and whatever happens, I get three weeks off and that's, and then we lead into the next season. So um, I'm just looking at this as another opportunity to try to go win, try to play great. And if it, if it's in the cards, awesome. And like you've seen, I mean, Will's played amazing for the two, three years he's been out here, but it's a lot harder than it, it is, you know, it looks or seems to win. And there's a lot of luck involved and there's a lot of bounces your way. I know he hit it into the trees on one of the holes and it bounced right in the middle fairway. Like, there's a lot of things that have to happen yeah. to win unless you're just completely on and you're just that much better than everyone that week. I mean, there's some things that happen. So I have to have some things happen for me to win as well. So if, you know, if that doesn't go my way, then I get three weeks off. Yeah. If you remember in 2019, when Tiger won the masters, that amazing victory, there was a couple of times he hooked some into the trees and he kicked them and kicked them right out of the fairway. I mean, yeah, there, there's so much more. You got to have luck going your way too, man. There's, there's enough so bad luck. There's yeah. so much of that that happens. It's it's more than what people think. Like as a player, you see it where two guys hit into a bunker in that week. One guy plugs, one guy doesn't. That guy gets an up and down, the other guy doesn't, and the guy that didn't plug wins the tournament. Like it's just stuff like that. It's like we hit yeah. the same shot in the bunker, and somehow yours plugged, yours didn't, or both hit in the trees. One guy has a shot to the green, one guy has to chip out, and you know. So, Golf is a game of it. luck, man. There's a lot of luck involved in this. There is. Too. It's a crazy game. It's a crazy. It crazy is. Game. Before we let you go, we play a quick emergency nine holes here. I'm going to ask you nine questions. Some of them have to do with golf. Some of them don't have jack shit to do with golf. All right. All right. All right. Here we go. Number one, who's the best ball striker on the PGA Tour? Will's out tour. Wow. Uh, number three, uh, excuse me, number, number two, your go-to food on the road. Uh, what? Tacos. I'm a huge taco guy. I have a taco review on my Instagram, so I'm a huge taco. Oh, nice. Guy. Have you have you been to uh, have you been to Taco Lou here in uh, Jacks? Uh, I have been Taco Lou. Yeah, Taco Lou is good. I haven't rated it. I'm I'm a huge authentic like street taco guy. So the American tacos usually don't get my best ratings, but right. All right, here we go. Uh, player you'd most be nervous with, other than Tiger Woods, to be paired with on the tour. Ooh. Um. Gosh, I honest, I know, might not have any because I, I would say I've never played with Rory, uh, but I'm friends with Rory, so it wouldn't be that weird. But I've never played with Rory, but I honestly don't think I'd be that nervous because I've played with everybody and we're all friends. And right, have and, you played with Tiger? I not in a tournament, no. Not in a tournament, no. no. Uh, dumbest thing you've heard or seen from a fan? Oh God, I've heard a lot of things. <laughs> Ooh, um, there's a lot of alcohol involved out there yeah i can't i mean i can't think of any specific one right now but i would just say the ones where guys say getting the hole from a tee shot is still just baffles me i'm like all right um that, that's kind of dumb I gotta, i'm trying to think i had some the other day i had some recently that were so bad <laughs> Yeah, I, they say some dumb stuff. But what I will say is that's one thing I really appreciate about playing in the British Open is those fans are so respectful and they right. they just get golf. And we definitely get some drunk fans that um, don't get golf. So, <laughs> uh, Music on the golf course or no go? Yeah, when I'm practicing, heck yeah, all the yeah, time. Music. Speaker, 
speaker, untoucher, chilling. Yeah. What's your go-to music? On the golf course, probably country. Yeah. Country. Uh, oh, okay, cool. Love that. Yeah, just casual. I think it kind of puts you in the mood, and it's. Yeah. But I go to I go to everything, but usually if I'm just playing whatever, it's nice to have country. Nice. Uh, favorite sports team or athlete? Uh, I'm a Colorado guy, so the Avalanche and Broncos are got to be my top two. Um, yeah, that's anything Colorado. So, most famous uh, number in your cell phone right now? <laughs> um, most famous. Probably if we're going on Instagram, all that. I I don't know. Probably Steph Curry. Okay, that's. I, wow, I was, you were struggling for a name there. You pull out Steph Curry. That that's pretty famous. I it's kind of funny. My friends give me a lot of a lot of shit for this, but I have a lot of celebrity friends. I don't know how. No, no, that's a lie. Canelo. Canelo is probably the most famous person. Canelo Alvarez. Really? Alvarez. Yeah. Well, I mean, wow. Canelo. All of Mexico. Right. Loves Canelo. So, like, however many people are in Mexico, <laughs> love Canelo. Like Steph Curry might have fifty million. Or 100 million people. I mean, they have, he has all of Mexico and right. all of the Mexicans in, in the U.S. So, yeah, probably Canelo. All right. Uh, in the gym, cardio or weights? Oh, weights all day. Okay. You hate cardio? I hate it, yeah. I did so much, so much growing up, like, as far as sprints and stuff for basketball and other sports that right. now that I play golf, I just walk for a living. I, I, I'd rather lift and work out and do, like, a fast-paced workout as my cardio than just treadmill or bike or whatever oh, it. it is boring i mean you're it like is. i'm not like, like how far do i have to go how many miles how much longer like it, it's the just boring. I get bored. like i i mean i i just don't get it i honestly i see it and i'm just like i i could put if you gave me sprints of 10 minutes and it's just super hard for 10 minutes boom i'm in but an hour on a peloton zero chance i can't yeah no it. i have one of those it's just it, it i get bored after like 25 minutes i'm so bored i don't know what to do yeah, i'm not even tired i was bored yeah, me too. All right, last but not least, if you weren't a pro golfer, how would we know who Wyndham Clark is? Um, you would be hiring me as your local fishing guide to take you fishing somewhere Thanks. in Colorado, Montana, Alaska, wherever, and I'd be the guy tying your flies and catching fish. Nice. Okay. That's cool. <laughs> That's a fun job too, though. Heck, the yeah, good thing I, is I, you can do that in your time off. Yeah, that's what I do in my town. That's literally after this tournament, I have a couple couple trips planned to go and, and fish. So that's awesome. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, I I see it as I'd want to do what makes me happy, and I love to fish, so that make that make me happy. That's awesome, Wyndham man. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Congratulations on making it to the BMW this week, and good luck uh, there. Hope we see you in the tour champ, and if not, uh, enjoy your next three weeks off, and then it's time to start right back up again. Yep, exactly. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. Thanks yeah. for tuning in to another edition of the Stripe Show podcast.